Hey there, before we start today's amazing video, we've got to talk about something sinister. Did you know I've been paying for a gym membership I haven't been using since 2015? How could this happen? Who could have ever foreseen this? But fret not, because today's video is sponsored by Rocket Money. It's rocket money, not rocket science, but they're both smart. This little gem of an app is like your personal finance superhero. It's on a mission to zap away useless subscriptions, shrink those scary bills, and make your wallet breathe a sigh of relief. I've been using Rocket Money to kill those sneaky subscriptions you end up forgetting about. And when I say kill, I mean cancel them safely and securely. I didn't mean kill. I didn't mean kill. You can do it without having to talk to a single human being. Just a couple of taps and poof. I'm also using Rocket Money to negotiate my bills. Just take a photo of my bill, a few taps, and they're on it like Sherlock Holmes. They've got my back on everything from internet to cable bills. You don't want to miss out. Rocket Money has saved customers an average of $720 a year. That's like one DoorDash order, folks. Over 5 million members are already using it, and now it's your turn. If you're ready to join the money-saving party, go to rocketmoney.com slash JonTron or hit that link in the description. Start for free or go premium for the full VIP experience. Remember, it's rocketmoney.com slash JonTron to get started for free. And now, it's video time. Today, we're going to be looking at a strange little entry into the world's collective film collection called A Wrestling Christmas Miracle. Uh, I warn you to brace yourself for this one, because while it may not evoke strong feelings at first glance, uh, with a tagline like, Stupid crooks hold the only copy of a youth's movie for ransom while his father's away in Africa staging a wrestling-based coup, uh, we can't really ignore, can we? We can't, you know, how do you say, look the other way? So let's bust open this stocking stuffer and take stock of just how much coal we all got for this Christmas holiday. I give you a wrestling Christmas miracle. Wait, is this really the first thing we see? Did I start halfway through the film? So right off the bat, the movie starts off on a very strange foot, and the first, like, actual four minutes and 30 seconds of it comprise of just some kid wrestling for real at his school's competitions or something. You can tell it's genuine footage because all the faces in the background are blurred out. At this point, you can pretty much glean that it's probably the director or producer's son or something like that, because if it isn't, that makes it even weirder, frankly. If there is a name synonymous with youth wrestling in the state of New Jersey, it's Case Gabriel, the son of Olympian Ajax Gabriel. So it's kind of hard to follow, but uh, apparently the kid wrestling here is called Case Gabriel. He's some kind of wrestling champion in New Jersey, and the story follows him and his Olympian father, Ajax Gabriel, who we haven't yet seen. It's genetics. Ah, uh, there he is. Found him. The kid is a machine built to win. <laughs> Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna have to pause right here. What in the hell was that? Uh, who is this random dude all of a sudden, and why is he hassling my man over here like that? What's going on? That just comes out of nowhere. And even appeared in a protein shake commercial with his father. <sighs> I, do I have to report this movie to the authorities? Is, is, is that the right thing to do? Should I stop making the video and find the number for like the FBI, for God's sake? What is going on? I must remind you that by this point, we haven't even gotten to the first real line of the movie, but somehow this guy's popped in twice already, once shirtless. Yeah. That kid's reaction right there, that's the first semi-normal thing that's happened so far in this entire film. Emphasis on semi, meaning it's not all the way normal. I'm still in shock and pain. Who is this person? I gotta know, hold on. Let me just check IMDB. Wait a minute, Ken Del Vecchio. Mario Del Vecchio. Eureka! I found it! Yeah, the plot thickens. Uh, apparently, they are not only father and son in the movie, but in real life as well. And surprise, surprise, Kenneth Del Vecchio also just happens to be the writer and producer of the film. I'm shocked. So, so like, what is this thing? Is he making this movie for his son to launch his acting career or something? Let's see what he's written for us then. You know, let's give it a chance. Show us what you got, Mario and Kenneth. I'm done with wrestling. Well, what a miracle. Merry Christmas, everyone. Done with wrestling? Why is that, Case? Because in 40 days and 40 nights, it's Christmas. So? I hate to say it, but she's got a solid point, son. Your rebuttal better be bulletproof. My friend has been in a coma for three months, and if I make a movie that will make him laugh, he'll come out of his coma. That is not what I expected you to say. <coughs> hey, fair play. Science has never proved that can't work, but uh, that could just be because they don't waste their time, you know, testing that. 
Keep in mind, please, this is actually the first line of the film. After five minutes of all that bullshit, that's what we get. You know as much as I do at this point. You're going to make a movie at only 11 years old in hopes that your friend will come out of his coma? Yes, and I'm gonna write it and direct it. What can you say? You love a movie that doesn't beat around the bush, you know? This is solid storytelling. And you have to help me. Well, it can't be helped. I guess I'll just have to write myself into more of the movie. Say la vie. This, this, this Kenneth guy is quite the character, isn't he? I've, I've just got to know more about him. Hold on. Oh, damn. That this is apparently not this guy's first rodeo. That's a sizable Wikipedia page. He's apparently written, produced, and acted in over 30 films. Not only is he apparently the founder of the Hoboken International Film Festival, he's also the author of several legal books, including like hyper-technical works on criminal code, which by the way, he himself states are second only to the Bible in terms of literature. His words. The greatest book ever written on Earth is the Bible. The second greatest book uh, is my criminal code book. And if that weren't enough for you, he's apparently also a former part-time New Jersey municipal judge. What doesn't this guy do? And by the way, what exactly is a part-time judge? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't even know that's something that existed. I am sure it's not the abusive language towards your patients that landed you in here. Uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly what's wrong here. Uh, that's, that's just how the movie is. That's actually what happens in the movie. It just abruptly cuts from all that stuff you just saw to this with no clues at all as to what's going on. <clears throat> Anybody gonna say anything? That's, that's not American Sign Language. <laughs> You had something to say? You are a complete mental midget. You do not have Dr. Reno in front of you. No, you don't. How would you like it if you stepped into Newark Municipal Court? You know, you're fighting a charge. You know you didn't commit the crime. It's 25 to life. It's serious. You look up on the podium and this, this, is, this is staring back at you. Get used to looking out from behind iron bars because uh, let's face it, you don't stand a chance. Idiot. There you are! Where have you been? Look, at least Gilbert Gottfried's in this movie. What do you mean Gilbert Gottfried's in this movie? Oh god, no. Was this his last movie? This came out in 2020. It's cutting it close. It, almost! Okay, not technically. Uh, we can still sleep tonight. Yeah, so the legendary Gilbert Gottfried is in this movie for some reason, and so are other well-known actors like Michael Winslow from Police Academy, and that back there was Martin Cove from Karate Kid and Cobra Kai. Did these people even know what they were involved with here? Did they just tell them it was a make-a-wish thing and that's why they got the kid over there in the coma? How did they get these actors? Is it really that easy? What, what was the budget for this thing? Two million dollars? What, how? You don't just get two million dollars out of nowhere. And look, a lot of his movies have budgets like that. What? I'm just saying, a lot of genuinely classic films didn't even have a budget that high. Surely these movies like don't make their money back through the box office. Huh? I mean, there's no info on the record about that, but I don't think this played in theaters either, so where is this money coming from? Is it revenue from his legal books or something? That'd be a lot of book sales, okay? I don't know what, but something's rotten here. Oh yeah, the stink on this wrestling mat goes down below the carpet to the layer that looks like pizza. Or at least when I was a kid, I thought it looked like pizza. Don't make fun of me. What do you think, Yoda? Mm, money laundering possible, but to just land a loss, definitively say I will not. I hate this thing. And if you, bought the, if you bought this for your lawn for Christmas, you saw that in the store, you picked that up, you took it home, what is wrong with you? Get help. Day one of your sentence is officially over. What do you think? I didn't script it with curse words. You didn't script it with curse words? So yeah, it turns out that whole thing that just randomly popped into the film was actually the comedic anti-coma film all along and we've basically just been watching it. So what'd you think? Did you laugh? Did you cry? Understandable. Yes, I was the inspiration for this project. Man, it's sad. Uncle always gets far away from the boom mic when he's drunk. He just can't help himself. I think he's trying to say, um, 
What is this? This guy loves his sign language jokes, okay? And buddy, pow! What is going on with the V-neck here? Okay, this is out of control. I'm no fashionista, but you got some explaining to do. You want a V-neck, I'll give you a V-neck. Okay. What you got going on is pathetic. If it doesn't start at the belly button, how will they even know what letter it's, it is? There we go. Nice and right in my retina. Who needs to see for this Christmas? Don't mind that. Don't mind that. No, nobody get too turned on. But guys, this isn't about me. It's about Charlie. In five days, it's Christmas, and when he hears this movie, he's gonna wake up from his coma laughing. Case, you did a wonderful thing here. But your little baby friend is dead. He's not coming back, Kate. That's not how this works. Don't you think if you could bring him back with laughter, the doctors would have put Seinfeld up on the little TV in the hospital room or something? Case, your friend's a vegetable. He's like this cauliflower, except this is much more useful because I can eat this. He's gone, Case, he's gone. You need to start wrestling again, pal. I'll start wrestling again after Christmas when Charlie wakes up. Yeah, come here. <laughs> you know what Abraham Lincoln said, don't you? He said, wrestle right now or I won't finish the Civil War. Four score and seven broken ribs. I'm going for the Gettysburg grab. Hey, it was great sticking around for this movie, but I'm gonna do what I do every year at Christmas time, either with you or without you. Usually it's with you. We are not going to the Congo with you to wrestle. What a selfish Case, I am going to wrestle an elephant for you. So you heard that right. Uh, the dad leaves the movie at this point to wrestle an elephant in the Congo for his son. Happy holidays. And uh, that's pretty much that. And you, young lady. Elephants are really fucking cool and I don't want to wrestle one. I just want to see one. I want to see its ears flap. That's why I'm going. Now let's all huddle it up. One, One, two, two, three. three. Merry Christmas! So it's revealed that the comedic film has only one copy for some reason, and it's entrusted to the drunk uncle to protect it and make a copy when he gets home. Listen, your dad made me the associate producer for a reason. Give me the hard drive, I'll make a copy of it. I'll make a copy of the DVDs, and I keep it safe for you, buddy. Okay, Uncle Ronald. <laughs> yes, my boy, her, thank you. But you don't want this? You don't want this pepper throughout your movie? <laughs> you don't want his uh, Bilbo Baggins impression or whatever the fuck this is? It is going to be the best Christmas ever, I tell you. You don't want that? Well, you're getting that. Yeah, open the door. We ain't fooling around. But all is not well at the Gabriel household. For mere moments after the uncle is entrusted with the hard drive, which, uh, by the way, has the only copy of the movie baked into it, it's revealed that two uh, scheming ridiculously annoying characters are planning to steal it and hold it for ransom for a large sum of money. The buffoon has gone to bed and gorgeous boyfriend has a scathingly brilliant plan to make off with the Gabriel's Christmas. Make off? And then oh, You mean steal. <laughs> Just fucking steal it already? I'm trying to sleep. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Twelve drummers drumming, eleven pipers piping Where is the ivy? Where are the tubes? How does he piss? So, there's your coma victim. Let's be real, he, he just didn't want to go to school because he knew he was going to fail his biology exam and now he's just locked in for the long game. Yeah, I, I know a long game when I see one. This, this is a long game right here. He's going like this every time the coast is clear. You wanted to play with fire, kid, now you're in adult diapers. Your mom's singing you nursery rhymes out of pitch right next to your head. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. So let me summarize the rest of this film for you briefly. Uh, nothing happens for 40 minutes straight. The robbers arrange to trade money for the hard drive of the film. Uh, the drunk uncle then pulls a gun on the robbers and then randomly Robs his own family instead. There's a million dollars in that bag. Between that and the black market of the movie, I'm gonna be set for life and I don't have to live in your shadows anymore. Even though he could have just taken the money before they got there because he was with her and he had the money. He had, he had the money. He already had, he's, he's the one who brought the money. So, Kenneth comes back from Africa to save the day and now things are really gonna be awkward at family get-togethers. And then at the last minute, the kid tackles the uncle and they get the movie back. It doesn't matter. Does it, does it even matter? Ronald's gun was a fake. He took it from my toy collection. No, Case, that's a bomb. This is no bomb. It's a can of tennis balls. He was a good kid. He tried his hardest and now he's dead. It's a relatable story.
He's dead! He's he's dead! Can I go home? <laughs> so anyways, there's one loose end to tie up. Case still has to play that movie for his friend and wake him up out of his coma. He just needs a little more time. Yeah, it didn't work. He's dead. He's gone. He's yeah, he's locked in there forever. That was the last option. Shit. At this point, things start to wrap up, and Case says his final tearful goodbyes to his friend. Wanna know my family's secret wrestling move? It's called the Gabriel Splato with a soup ladle. Now don't show anyone this move, Charlie. This is how you do it. After you've peeled back the guy's forearm. Uh, Case, what are you, what are you doing? You lock his head. Oh, don't bend his head like that. You're going to put him in another coma. Case, that's a problem. Now this will either put the guy to sleep or wake uh, him up. Case, could you get off? Charlie, you woke up. Thank you for getting off me. That's some crazy story. It hurts. It just hurts so bad. You know, some days it just hurts. Oh, my dear God. It's a miracle. It's a true Christmas miracle. sleep. You're a barrier, Jerry. We bury together. We're barriers. Hatchets! We bury our hatchets, George. <laughs> Not dead hookers. <laughs> <laughs>